welcome back to Project Happy Home. If you're new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 10, 7, and 5. They are all fall babies, so they will be turning 11, 8, and 6 in the fall, and we will be doing fifth grade, a hybrid second and third grade, and then a hybrid kindergarten and first grade with them next year. If you're interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more essentialist lifestyle, you have come to the right place, so be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Today's video is a bit of an impromptu video. I actually had a dental appointment yesterday. It was one of the very first times I had gone out during this quarantine thing by myself and there was a thrift store right next door to it. So, so I could not resist and I went in and I bought some books, but much, much less than my usual 30 to 40 from before my no by year times. So I bought, I think about nine books and I have some of them here to show you. Some of them have been confiscated by my children. One of the books that I don't have here to show you is in my daughter's room and that is a graphic novel called Smile. Now I think it's more for middle grades, but um, it's about a sixth grader who goes through um, middle school, I think, in the duration of the book. But my seven-year-old is really enjoying it, and that's more important to me than what level it's exactly suited for. I think it seems really appropriate to um, a higher elementary middle school level, but she's enjoying it, and that's what's important to me. So without any particular order, I'll show you the kids' books first, and then I'll show you the adult books that I got. So one of the first kid books that I picked up was this one, Stories and Rhymes for Every Bedtime. These are one of those puffy cover books. Um, I find them often at Ross, actually, and some of them I really, really like. This, this is published by Paragon. I think they're the ones who publish a bunch of these, like, compilations. The reason I like this is because it's dated. So if you can see, like, every day has a different story or poem. I really like these little dated compilations. I like treasuries. I like incorporating them into morning time or even nighttime readings. The reason I like the dated ones in particular is it really does hold you accountable, and it gives you something to do even on the day when you don't feel like doing anything. That's one of my favorite parts about this. So this one in particular, I think I'm gonna keep right by the breakfast table. So it has classics like um, Dill Dill Dumpling, My Son John, but it also has ones that I've never heard of like Follow My Bangalore Man. I also like these because they're good for your middle readers. So you know, your second and third graders to read to the younger kids, like they're really on level for them. So don't just think about these books in terms of like, you know, you reading to the youngest. Think about them in terms of your older kids practicing their reading. I picked up two George Washington books because we're doing American history with my fifth grader next year. I think picture books are really valuable no matter what age you are. I enjoy looking at them and I'm 40. So I figure my 10 year old should enjoy them as well. This one is George Washington's Teeth. And I like the illustrations in here. I like that it was short and sweet and funny. And then this one is George Washington, a picture book biography, and it's a scholastic book. This one's a little bit more extensive, but again, has beautiful illustrations, a lot more text, but goes through his biography pretty well. Another book that I picked up is The Children's Book of Heroes by William J. Bennett. I'm not a huge William J. Bennett fan, honestly. I think he has very um, distinct ideas about morality that perhaps do not align fully with my own, but I do like this book. I like that it's a huge variety of different characters from different periods of history. I like that it includes a diverse host of characters, not simply um, white people, <laughs> for lack of a better way of putting it. It has both religious characters as well as non-religious characters. It has mythological figures as well as real ones. So here's Helen Keller. And I just thought it was a really nice compilation of figures that you want your kid to know about throughout history. So again, another good addition to morning time or the anytime basket. This is such a cute book, you guys. Letters from Felix. I'd never heard of it and I'm so excited about it. It looks so cute. Look, so this is the fly leaf. And so I guess there's this little bunny on a world tour. And the cutest part about it is he's writing letters to his friend Sophie. But so you see here, it's just a flat thing, right? But here you have the envelope that you can open and pull out the letter. And there's several of these from his different areas that he visits. And I think this is so adorable. It reminded me of letters from afar, which I love. But so see, you see here, Dear Sophie, and it has a little picture of um, London. So here's the little soldiers, you know, at Buckingham Palace, and it tells her a little bit about the trip. And he goes on, and I think there's, let's see, let me count one. Two, three, four, five, six. 
So this book has about seven letters in it, and I think it'll be such a cute little addition to our geography studies for this year. We generally do a geography tea time where we use Universal Yum's boxes, and we go through different, you know, maps and charts and graphs and things like that about the area, and we pull out some atlases and stuff, but this is a nice little addition to it, and I fully think that my youngest will steal it and start reading all of them on her own, which is exactly what I want to happen with books. So moving on to the adult books, I only picked up three for myself this time, and I'm really proud of myself, you guys, because that is just an extraordinary exercise of restraint on my part, and it shows me that my no buy year truly did change my like buying habits, which made me happy. So the first one is The Blood of Flowers, and this is by Anita, I'm gonna mess up her last name, so forgive me, Amira Zvani. And it's a good sized book. She was born in Tehran, and this is basically about medieval Persia and the whole um, carpet uh, design trade and carpet making trade in the fabled city of Isfahan. A young woman blossoms as a brilliant designer of carpets, a rarity and a craft dominated by men. So I'm excited to read this. I think the cover is so beautiful. I love this color, as you can see from my shirt. My shirt, by the way, says, some days I amaze myself. Other days I put my keys in the fridge. <laughs> which is true. Um, this is Islam, The Straight Path by John L. Esposito. Now I have heard of this book before. I've never read it. This is an older book. Like this is copyright 1988, but I picked it up mainly for the history of Islam. He was one of the most um, preeminent scholars of Islam uh, way back when. And at an age when, at a time when there was a lot of like Islamophobia, which honestly, when hasn't there been, um, he definitely, produce some even keeled books. And so I just wanted to read this. It's it's pretty dense, like the print is pretty small and everything. But I like to know what I'm talking about when I talk about um, different religions and stuff like that. And I grew up Islamic. I like to know what I'm talking about when I engage in family debates and stuff like that. So I wanted to go through this. So the final book that I bought for myself is by Geraldine Brooks, and this is People of the Book. Uh, Geraldine Brooks has won the Pulitzer, and I am not a huge fan of Pulitzer Prize winning authors. I think they do write very well, obviously, but the Booker Prize and the National Book Award are much more my jam. Like I find like those, those award winning books generally fit within my genre, my flow, my liking. Pulitzer Prize winning books I find can be all over the place. They, their criteria don't tend to favor just one type of book which is great, but so I can't rely on it as much to say that I will enjoy it. But I'm actually really looking forward to this book. I'm gonna read you the beginning of the description because I think it does a good job. In 1996, a rare book expert is offered the job of a lifetime, analysis and conservation of a mysterious, beautifully illuminated Hebrew manuscript created in 15th century Spain and recently saved from destruction during the shelling of Sarajevo's libraries. So I'm super excited about like reading this because honestly, like preserving ancient books and being able to like read them and analyze them and stuff would be my dream job. I actually took a class in um, British law and like ancient law in Georgetown when I was in law school there. And we had a chance to go down into like the basements of Georgetown and like look at all the like, you know, carefully preserved manuscripts and stuff. And I still regret to this day that I didn't pursue a career in that, but hey, there's still time. So um, looking forward to reading this one. So that was all the books that I picked up from the thrift store yesterday, but I also picked up, you guys, the cutest little personal teapot. So these are those teapots where, you know, you have a cup on the bottom and your own little personal teapot on top. And I'm just going to spin this around for you so you can see. Isn't it the sweetest little teapot ever? I'm so excited. So I am on the lookout for three more of these so we can have our own little personal teapots at Poetry Tea Time. They retail for like everywhere from like $12 to like, you know, $50 online. But since I found one at a thrift store, chances are that I could probably find more either on eBay or at a thrift store. And I'm just going to keep my eyes open because I think this is just adorable. <laughs> so anyhow, I hope you enjoyed that little impromptu video, you guys. As always, I really do appreciate your time and I wish you the very best day.